Hey guys, welcome to Science Appliance, where we apply the science. Today I'm really excited to be reacting to Matt Pat's, well, I say second part, but um, it's not really a second part, it's, it's, yeah, it's the second part of, of last week's video. Uh, and he's going to go through the timeline today, so I'm pretty excited to watch this, and um, I'll tell you my thoughts about it as well, because I am making my own timeline, I've made my own timeline, it's finished. Um, it, I finished about a week ago, but I need to edit it all, so hopefully this is all going to be kind of similar. Um, I don't know, we're going to have to wait and see. Let's have a look in three, that's, that's a two, three, two, one. Go. Hi, I'm Masahiro Sakurai. Today I'd like to introduce you to the new Super Smash Brothers game for the Nintendo Switch. Many fighters have appeared in the series. I'm sure you're all <laughs> I'm so glad he did this. This is great. This time. Please take a look. Snake! <laughs> this makes me so happy. Star Foxy, Nugget. What? Why? Why is Bobby rotten? Oh, it's so good. I was gonna do a video like that where I just went through every character, but I, I couldn't be asked to edit it. It was so much editing. It was so much like making characters' heads if, like have an invisible background and then putting it on and following the trail and stuff. I wasn't Hello, doing that. Welcome to Game Theory, the William Afton of YouTube. I always come back. <laughs> so here's something crazy. You know True. how every FNAF game tends to have five main nights, a bonus sixth night that gets you more lore hints, and then a challenge mode seventh night where you customize all the animatronics? Well, look at the games. We have five main games bearing the five nights title, a bonus sixth game that was mostly for lore, and now a seventh standalone release where you customize the animatronics. He's on to the something. game releases directly mirror the gameplay! Either Scott is a That's bad That's amazing! I'm thinking about things way too hard! You try to read into every little thing and find meaning in everything anyone says, you'll just drive you yourself crazy. I heard you last time, Mr. Hippo! <laughs> but guess what, you Marty reject? Reading into every little thing is the only way to have this series make any sort of sense whatsoever. Yeah, we don't want to go it's too deep, point. because there's some it's things that I know with Scott didn't think about, out, ultimate custom night and that's what's shreds, kind of crushing our theories. It feels like the story of FNAF is at its end, or at least the Afton storyline is at its end. The series will probably come back to tell another story in the same universe later. I mean, it's exactly what Scott did with FNAF 4, the quote-unquote Final chapter, dot, 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 of the original FNAF story. I see what you did there, Scotty. It's the yeah, final Jim chapter Gary. of the original story. Full game's but one oh story. no, friends, he wasn't done. He even ended that teaser with a question mark if you brighten that screen up enough. Man, Scott, you really wanted to leave the door open for more games in the wow. series, didn't you? You were milking it more than I was. Or Is that Waluigi in the wall? <laughs> I think I saw Waluigi in the wall. As they say in FNAF world, the pieces are in place for us. So it's time to take one final step back and put every single one of those pieces together into this, my final timeline for the final FNAF game. Though, uh, let me save you some work if you brighten the image you see on screen right now. You'll see that there's a question mark there, since, you know... <laughs> Always come back. And if he comes back, well, I gotta pull myself a Samurai Freddy and pursue the anime Fox of Truth wherever it may lead. Let's do this. Now, putting together a final timeline of events for this series is incredibly challenging and requires us covering a yeah. lot of really minute details from literally of course. every element the series has ever There are tiny this lore is my longest, hints. most involved theory in seven years. Most involved theory? Oh, wow, theory. okay. So fair warning that this episode is not for the faint of heart. It is no. extreme. A way for me to simultaneously flex my knowledge of the minutiae of the series, all while trying to come up with a satisfactory answer to pretty much every question it has ever thrown our way. And of course, there are some questions that don't have clean answers, which I'll be calling out for you as I go. So for those of you who want to take the challenge and attempt a timeline on your own, let me first explain my thought process. 
As I was writing this episode, there are three hard and fast rules that I applied. First, it's important to note that I put greater emphasis on information that was released more recently in the series. Okay. And while, yes, everything in the series is sure, okay. in FNAF 4 and even more so... You've already, you've already done a big timeline, so it makes sense to do that. It makes sense to focus more on the last games. That, FNAF 1 was that kind of... Game after years of trying how they kind of fit into before. Dead ends. Do you really think that he imagined a lore so deep that it would cover eight games, five books? No, definitely not. That he predicted so technically, FNAF so 1 isn't that canon. Well, it is canon. Purple people way back when we were all just making memes about Foxy, Swiggity, Swooty coming for that booty. Probably not. So it's safe <laughs> to assume that the newest information we're getting in games is the most accurate in pointing to the final sure. story he's yeah. looking to tell. So that's rule number that's one. A good rule number thing two, to say. adhering to key dates and events. Now, there isn't much that's certain in the story, which means that the things we do know must serve as fixed points that the other details fit around. We know for a fact from FNAF 1 phone calls that the animatronics are allowed to walk around freely until the bite of 87. We know from FNAF 3 yes. calls that the Golden Springlock suits are eventually retired to a back room after a tragedy at a sister location, the FNAF 4 Correct. Bites, which itself takes place in 1983. FNAF 3 also tells us that at some point William Afton tries to dismantle the robots, whose spirits rebel, causing him to yeah. become spring Fnaf 3 again, eventually yeah. getting himself sealed up behind a wall until the workers at Fazbear Fright discover his body and set him loose again. Details like those have to be our guideposts if we're having any hopes of getting anywhere in the story. And lastly, rule number three, realizing that this isn't just a simple linear timeline. It's clearly established in the games that multiple Fazbear locations exist at the same time. Yeah, the that's what's kind of hurting us a bit, because this, this pizza is open, that diner is open at the same time, blah blah blah. It's all hard to put together. Yeah, Spring Bonnie and Pepper. Spring Bonnie and Pepper. This not sure. only tells us that the first Freddy Fazbear's Pizza had two golden suits, but also that the first Freddy's was open at the same time as the FNAF 4 Freddy's. The Springlock failure in the FNAF 4 location prompted the yellow suit to be retired in the FNAF 1 location. In short, a lot of these yeah. events overlap. Restaurants often mm -hmm. stay open for years beyond what we see in the games, and everything weaves together in a way that's much more complicated than simply saying, this restaurant opened, kids died, it closed. The next one opened, kids died again, it closed. In all honesty, I suppose you could simplify it to that level, but we're not going to! I am holding myself to a higher standard. A slightly higher standard, but a higher standard nonetheless. Okay. So those three logical yeah, I see what he means. Let's get analyzing. To begin, we have to identify who William's first victim was. Now, I've covered FNAF. But in all my theories, one thing has remained consistent since FNAF. It's not the puppet. The puppet was first. Henry's daughter. Yeah. She is the character who is not like the puppet. The if he says it's so the puppet, he's already messed up. Be victim numero uno. But outside of that, it's always been just an assumption. And now that we've seen the event actually take place in the games, I think I've been wrong about it this entire time. Mm -hmm. Think about it. We have proof that William kills Henry's daughter in FNAF 6. Yeah, and then he drives away midnight oh, motorist later that night. See that later that night yeah yeah you're right juniors where he's turned away at the door now why would scott show us this snap six was all he's about turning away at the door because i'm missing children so which happened in the flat two location to establish that the mustard man is an alcoholic or anything he's doing it to establish a timeline the yes only time we hear of FNAF, fnaf six is where everything connects up together we know that any reason in this series it's all about the victims in fnaf six no one is allowed in or out you know especially concerning any Employees. And the name Juniors makes sense in Scott's classic way of giving us clues that are meant to Please do not serve murderers. Really yeah. just end up confusing all of us. Remember, FNAF 2's location is the grand reopening, a second Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria location, a Junior location if you will. And lastly, to further sure. solidify the puppet coming later in the timeline, remember why Freddy's closed in the first place? It wasn't due to murders or animatronics going haywire. According Missing to the children. newspapers, yeah. people just got weirded out by a place where kids disappeared. 
quote, After a long struggle to stay in business after the tragedy that took place there many years ago, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has announced that it'll close by year's end, end quote. This all means that the missing children's incident where five kids go missing at a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza must be the first event of the timeline. William Afton uses the spring bonnie suit to lure five kids to the back uh. of these only safe rooms that we hear about in FNAF okay. 3, hiding their dead bodies in the animatronic suits. We can even figure out the order of who was killed when based on clues hidden in Ultimate Custom Night. We know with a hundred He's gonna say Chica, is Chica was first based on one yeah. of the death lines. Okay. The only problem I have with this is in the Toy Chica cutscenes in, in Ultimate Custom Night, um, there are two before her, and I think that's Mangle, Golden Freddy, and then of course it's Chica, and then the rest of the MCI, and then the puppet. But um, I'll talk about that in the timeline, you'll, you'll see. I, I really don't think she's the first victim. We see it in FNAF 6's Fruity Maze. We also read about it in the fourth closet. Quote, beside them was a little girl with blonde curls. I heard Daddy say he was hit by a car, but I knew it wasn't true. Bonnie told me it wasn't true. He said he found my puppy. And did he take you to your puppy? He took me, but I don't yeah, remember. Again. My name's Susie. We even hear about it in the Chica anime cutscene. The, pu the puppy's dead and it's mine. Someone ran over Sick. his dog in front of my house. Geez, Scott, I know we were all looking for answers, but man, you beat <laughs> that one over the head, didn't ya? Not that I'm complaining, but that one was a bit overly obvious, and then all the other ones are just so damn obscure. Just gotta find a better Not answer. really. The last one is the puppet. Four other kids you know, you put um suits. bag over their head, shovel, the the throw them in your car. That's exactly how the Jeremy puppet dies, basically. Charlie. Yes. Hey, who are we to judge what other people name their kids? Probably some celebrity's kid. Oh, you must meet my children. This is Apple. Audio science. In the grass. All joking aside, though, loyal theorists will remember this last grave was given me... Is he going to talk about Cassidy finally? Theory. You see, this book, the FNAF Survival Logbook, holds a ton of reveals about the franchise, but they're all hidden in code. Some I was able to do. He's going to talk about Cassidy, isn't he? But a few hours after releasing my video cover... There we go. Board, the mystery was solved... Finally. Oh, he's addressing it. Game theorist, subreddit user, D Powerful. This is confusing me now, the Cassidy. The numbers that I had found, 52, 39, 15, 7, 2, 10, 11, 8, and 11, and yep. put them not into an alphabet grid for ciphers like word. I've been doing, and like the book was clearly hinting towards, but instead put them into the word search of all places. <laughs> Using the numbers as coordinates in the word search, you could spell the name Cassidy, a name that must belong to Golden Freddy based on the repeated use of Golden Freddy's signature line of its name. Me throughout the yeah. Book, gravestone imagery, which lines up with the fifth yeah. mystery gravestone at the end of FNAF 6, and the Golden Freddy. But consider this: Golden Freddy is a male character. He's Freddy Fazbear. He's yeah, but he has to go along. Regardless of the spirit that possesses it, so the gender confusion works here. Scott even used that to his advantage in the casting call, where he was specifically looking for auditions where, quote, the gender should not be immediately clear. It should work as either a young boy or a young girl. Now. Teaching kids that gender is fluid. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I get him. Nap is four years old this August. It's crazy, right? It is crazy. The last thing to say about Golden Freddy is proving that he gets possessed here, at the first Freddy Fazbear Pizza location rather than in FNAF 4 like most of us have assumed in the past. You see, in Ultimate Custom Night, you get an item called a Death Coin that can eliminate one animatronic from the game. But if you use it on Golden Freddy, you don't eliminate him from the but game, the you just get so you have scared by Freddy. In FNAF 2 locations. I remember that moment, that was terrible for those spring locks. Anyway, I played around with those audio files and got them to hear. <laughs> Laughter, obviously. <laughs> Let's find a suit that's right for you. <laughs> and there was more fantasy and fun where I came. There it is. That that's feels really random. He like, is, like, it's that's true. An angry spirit who just killed you, but let me tell you about There's more fantasy and fun where I come from. Fantasy and fun, obviously, phone guy in front of one. Fantasy and fun is a direct reference to the first game in the But Golden Freddy is part of the missing children. It's Scott telling us that Golden Freddy is the same spirit who speaks to the crying child via the Fredbear plush at the end of FNAF 4, but who dates all the way back to the first pizzeria and the missing children's incident. Phew, you got all that? Good. Because that doesn't necessarily mean that... Not easy. 
Cassidy died in the first. I don't know. I, I might be interpreting this wrong, but event in the series, but there is consistent logic and evidence to back it all up. However, it's at this point that things get messy from a timeline. <laughs> at this point, now, there really? Are two dangling threads of events that directly conflict with each other. One, the first Freddy Fazbear location has to close so it can reopen sometime before 1987. However, it has to remain open at least until 1983 when the FNAF 4 bite happens. The event that prompts Phone Guy to call back to the FNAF 1 location informing them that the Springlock suits are being retired. I don't know. Circus Baby's Pizza World is opened after Freddy Fazbear's is closed. Due to the massive success and even more so the unfortunate yeah. closing of Freddy okay. Fazbear's Pizza, it was clear that the stage was set, no pun intended, for another contender at children's entertainment. Again, this wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the empty girl's bedroom that we see in FNAF 4. As we established in a previous episode using the FNAF survival logbook, the crying child... Yeah, the girl's bedroom is Elizabeth. Which would make this his sister's room, Elizabeth Afton, the girl who gets herself clawed and goes on to possess Baby on the opening day of Baby's Pizzeria. That's why she's missing and why her room is empty. But that can't happen if Freddy's is still open. And Freddy's can't be closed until the bite of 83 causes the spring to be retired so that phone guy can make his call. You see the problem there? Do you understand My head. why creating a timeline of all this stuff is so darn complicated? My head. Anyway, to move forward, we have to apply rule number one that I talked about earlier and throw out some of the phone guy information in order for the event to work. Exactly. closes in the aftermath of the missing children's incident. With no pizzeria to serve as his murder den, Afton tries to launch a new restaurant, Circus Baby's Pizza World. It's important to note that this is an actual sure, restaurant. Sure, sure. I know. I understand that now. We'll get to that one more Some things in Phone Guy's voice in FNAF 1, 2, 3 don't match up with the things later on, but that's why you're going to leave them out for the moment. specifically for this place, the mini arenas, Balloon Boy, JJ, DD, and of course, the star attraction, Baby. Notice how they all even look alike. However, on day one of the restaurant opening, uh -huh. Elizabeth, Afton's daughter, finds herself alone with Baby and gets herself clawed. We know that it's closed on day one, both from Baby's story and sister location. Did you know that I was on stage once? It wasn't for very long. Only one day. And from one the same one. story about a supposed gas leak yeah. posted on Scott's website in the lead up to the release of the game. This in turn explains a lot of the weirdness going on in FNAF 4. Why Elizabeth's room is empty. Why Michael Afton has nightmares of animatronics with stomach mouths. And why William locks Michael in his room and has so many surveillance cameras following him around. He doesn't want what happened to his daughter to also happen to his youngest son. You see why it's so important for Circus Baby's Pizza World to happen before the events but of FNAF 4? Before Spoilers for Fourth Closet. Elizabeth he wants to be baby. And William put Michael back together to free baby. Running parallel to all of this, and I mean all I don't of this, is Fred my Bear's family diner. Not the sister location we visited the game, sister location, but the only sister location actually called a sister location by phone guy during his snap three call. Now you're going to confuse loads of people. I understand what you're saying, but we know for a fact I think other people are going to understand you in this. Location based on this purple hat teaser that came out with the release of the game. Right, the image, look down at the bottom right hand corner, and fill in the blanks, and you see yourself property of Fred Bear's family diner. We also know that it should fit here in the timeline because of one small detail that Scott made note of with the release of FNAF 4's Halloween edition. While Nightmare Puppet and Nightmare Mangled weren't canon, he made it clear that Nightmare Balloon Boy was. Now, if I'm right about Circus Baby's pizza oh. and his characters, then the crying child would have come across Balloon Boy. He 
existed at this point in the timeline. But because both the puppet and Mangle don't exist until the FNAF 2 location, neither... Okay, that does make sense. However, not it's not a nightmare. They're real animatronics. So at this point, we know how the story goes. William is working there as it's a testing a chamber thing. Afton, AKA the crying child has witnessed his friends I agree with that. Actually, that's a good point. Blue and Boy should be in sister location, yeah. That's a very good point. At the end of the week, at his birthday party, he gets shoved into Fred Bear's mouth by his brother and crunch! He dead, son! The spirits of his dead friends, all five of them, remind them that they're still here for him, and the whole incident goes down in history as the bite of 83 based on both the TV Easter egg in FNAF 4 and the code in Sister Location's secret room. Oh. But again, it's here that we hit another little wrinkle. You see, in the FNAF survival logbook, it asks Michael whether his favorite ride was the carousel, a feature that was only present in the FNAF 2 restaurant. Mm -hmm. This also coincides with my hypothesis earlier about the Midnight Motorist minigame and Junior's being another name for Freddy's version 2. It would make sense that that place that he's going to is indeed him running out to the new Freddy Fazbear's location. But we know Michael was bit in 1983 and that the FNAF 2 location is open in 1987 based on the paychecks to see the game. Fortunately, though, there's an elegant solution this time. The FNAF 2 location is just open earlier than we thought. Remember, Fred Bear's Family Diner being open doesn't preclude a new Freddy's location from also being open at the same time. The new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria is just open earlier than we all thought, at least as early as 1983, and continuing through 1987, no. a series of murders happens and the fight of 87 gets it closed down. This all no, because there's... it says... Place again, have the carousel be a favorite but still die in 1983. No, he's wrong. He doesn't want to lose another child, especially since he's in his own killing spree. He put security cameras Yeah, in the newspaper, I think it says in the newspaper in FNAF 2, it says that the location's been up for weeks, isn't it? means by he'll be sorry when he gets back. William is intentionally locking him in his room, giving him nightmares. It was reopened. So scared by the time we see him in FNAF 4. So sure, it can be open in FNAF in 1983. Just that. Nightmares. And it can be open in 1987. It doesn't need to be open for that length of time. Lines indicate that before they were just an illusion, they had no flesh. But now, in the latest game, they are real. So, contrary to popular belief, these things were never real animatronics. Just a glorified way for William to keep his son away from his murder locations. Except, obviously, it didn't work. Despite his best, well, maybe not his best, but definitely his most stalkerish efforts, Michael gets crunched and dies. A fact that becomes very problematic for the timeline, considering that Michael Afton clearly survives till the end of the game. We see him in sister location. We watch him get scooped. We hear about him burning in FNAF 6. How is all of that possible if he's already dead? Surprisingly, there is a way to solve it, and I have the evidence to prove it, but sadly it'll have to wait until next time. This ended up being a 12-page script, which there's no way that we can do all in one week. So in the words of Edie, how unfortunate, how unfortunate, this is a thing I hate to do, <laughs> but the rest has to go in a part two. Anyway, don't worry, we'll get it out as fast as possible. It's already written. Just need to divide this up for editing purposes. In the meantime, though, make sure you jump scare that subscribe okay, button. Okay, okay. Who knows what it does at this point. There's a few things that are wrong with this. Um, I don't get what he's saying about FNAF 4. Like, there are a few things that I'm a little bit weird on. So, he said that the golden. He said that the person who possesses Golden Freddy, aka Cassidy, died in the FNAF 1 location. But the missing children died in the FNAF 2 location? That doesn't make any sense. Um, he also said the, the FNAF 2 location was open from 1983 to 1987, but it can't be. It can't be because the newspaper says that it was open for weeks, I'm pretty sure. Does it? I might need to look that up after this video. I can show you a picture on the screen right now if, um, if I need to. But, um, and also the FNAF, the way he interprets FNAF 4 is really weird. What he's saying that William is making him have nightmares, that's not how it works. 
obviously they they are real animatronics because William can see them. Yeah, my timeline's going to be really different to Matt's, so make sure you stick around for that by jump scaring, subscribe. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll see you all later. Hopefully I'll do a reaction to his second part of this timeline. So stick around for that as well, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye!